Well, joining me in the studio, and I'm absolutely delighted to have Peter Caron, of course. We, we have such fond memories of the time in, in Timwald and the way that you did your thing was different. It's been so, so quiet since you've gone, you know that, don't you? Well, it's not about trying to wind <laughs> them up. It's about trying to get yeah. proper yeah. Uh, accountability. Well, you certainly had the sparks flying and, and things like that. Well, but I was the factor what they could get away with. You've been quiet for some time. Uh, but you're still with Live Van, right? Well, I, I, I'm uh, trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure that we create the institutions of good governance. We haven't got it. And the time's running out. Oh, I don't want to see all my non-achievements being destroyed. And that's the problem that we've got. The problem is, is that they don't realise what we inherited when we went into politics, mm -hmm. where the average working wage was 45% of the, of the UK, where we had no redundancy. I can remember... A couple of things do, uh, as far as, as I remember, we were trying to make it illegal to sell on roadworthy vehicles. And we had the charge of uh, how can you bring this about? How, what will the poor people drive? I said, you pay them a decent wage, so they buy a safe car. Is that not logic? But that's sort of mentality. But the problem we've got is, is we've got a number of social cancers that have got to be addressed. And if they're not addressed, we're going to find out that the next generation who are already fiscally insecure, a lot more uh, precarious in the, in the future. And that needs to be stopped. The non-achievements we've, uh, we've brought about needs to be protected. And that's what, one of the reasons why I'm with this meeting with... Uh, the oh, yes, because you're, you're here to talk about a housing meeting. What exactly? Let's get that one done. Jim. Well, the housing meeting the on Thursday, the 13th of May at 7.30 at the Christian Science Church. Um, on Hillary Road um, and the idea is to, is to get people starting to make the real agenda. One of the things that concerns me, things that we've been on about for 30 years that are now being done in the likes of Lake Districts, we've been done for 60 years in the Channel Islands. I get tired of the idea that the trouble freedom well, let's start making sure we get freedom, not for the few to fleece the rest of us, but actually to make sure that we get housing back where it should be, a cornerstone of society, where we have a situation where it's not a luxury, it's a necessity of life. And there are things that as legislators we should be doing. And if they can do it now by local councils in the United Kingdom, we should be looking at certain restrictions on certain housing development in the future. Uh, are we talking about public or private here? I'm talking about uh, another, another layer as far as freehold houses. Liberal Vannon has been arguing for years, and me before that, before the creation of Liberal Vannon, about certain houses should have planning restrictions on use and ownership. At the moment, the only, the only planning restrictions are on, the, uh, on size, location, um, uh, and, and what, we want, what we've got to do is find a way of not soiling the quality of the property, but the commercial ability. How can these young kids buy a house when they're, they're, having to, they're having to try and compete with the buy-to-let market. And we need government to get out of bed with the developers and start making an agenda for the working people of the Isle of Man. That's quite a tough ask. Well, it, mean, well, it's, it it's shouldn't profit, be. It's profit-driven, though, isn't it? The very nature of oh, people building houses. Legislators, what we always did is we created the environment for the freedom to flourish. Issues like it took me nine years to get the dipsticks to sort out the situation over the VAT as an ex, ex joiner, you know, down to 5%. But when they come back and they say, oh, we make more money, of course you make more money. What we've got to do is create the environment. And what we need on housing is we need to get specific policies on the agenda of a property owning democracy. I've always been classed as some, they've always, the media have always tried to make out that I'm some sort of lefty. I, I am left. I believe in a social conscience. I believe the success of a nation is how you look after the weakest. But what I'm really concerned about is the fact of the, the inadequacies of this and previous administrations to actually legislate for a fair and free society. Property owning democracy is not something that should be unattainable. We should be able to do People like Ed Collister, who was an MHK back in the 60s, talked about, about this issue. We have to address this now. We are creating poverty in our society by the way that the housing situation is with both, both the to buy and the, the letting. So 
more houses being built, the supply and demand here, I mean... Well, the problem is not about the supply and demand. What the problem is, is no use building more houses if they go into the corporate investment part, part, portfolio. If we're going to build more houses, then we need to make sure that we look at things where certain... I always think of the time when my mum and dad, when we were 1975, I think it was, and we went up to look at a house at Birch Hill when, um, when the... the, the Labour Party who were instrumental in that, trying to get Birchill and Ballacurry going. And they could raise 12,000, but they couldn't raise the 15 or 15 and a half thousand. So that 3,000 pounds stopped them from moving there. That's why we need to also look at a progressive government mortgage scheme. We need to sort out the banks. We should be sorting the post office out so that we end up with a national bank in the Isle of Man that actually does a number of functions. But I'd like to talk about first the issue of planning. Certain houses should have restrictions on their planning enforcement as far as their commercial ability. So that house comes up, you and I go to look at that house, we can't buy it because you own a house, I own a house. Mm -hmm. you, if we want to rent that house out, we can't buy it. So that means that the kids and the first time buyers are getting a chance. We've watched the way they've created these first-hand buyers developments and they are quite farcical really over the years. It's been really a major def uh, uh, um, um, mistake that they haven't gone further uh, as far as that's concerned. Well, what about like Jersey having a, a two-tier system, well, you know, that's closed I, and yeah, open? Well, well, that's what I'm talking about in, in a way, but I'm putting it into the basic plan and enforcement. Mm. Certain houses don't just look at location, size, and design, but also use, uh, use and ownership. Mm. So certain houses can only be bought by an Isle of Man worker who doesn't own another residential property on the Isle of Man and can't be, so, can't be rented out. I mean, that's a big ask. To Why get is it through. a big ask? Because people want to sell their houses for as much as they can. People are buying them because there's no money to be made in the banks. Therefore, they're buying properties up, don't they, to make money from renting them. But so, so, so homes uh, is a, is, should be a luxury item. A home is about a nest, mm. not a nest egg. But and the sooner we get back mm. to realising this is creating a great social cancer. It's absolute nonsense. We put restrictions on, on who can have council houses. That's another farce where you've got people who can't get in that council list now because of the ridiculous levels of income that they've brought about. And then you have the utter nonsense with chief ministers saying about, oh, the housing, the housing list. The housing list has gone down for, for local authority housing because people can't get on it now because they've gerrymandered it. Has it never, oh, sorry, always been a situation that housing has always been unattainable, whatever life we live but that's not always... true is it I when I, I when when I first bought my house it was 18,000 mm. it was three times my salary it was three and a half times my salary that same house today and remember MHK's pay in them days was on the basis of your directorships and what you what you can get on the side the point is the wages are gone even with the wages they get today it would be about six or seven times the, the, uh, the price of the house, that, uh, that 18,000 pounds. That's the issue. Um, the issue is, mm. if, do we believe in a property owner democracy? And if we do, we make houses for people to live in, not for investment. And should we look, be looking at the UK and what their gearing is or not? Is that unimportant? Well, no, I because, mean, I mean, house prices are going up and up and up at the moment. It seems like the, the, there's a massive boom the on, The point isn't there? is, what we, as what we should be doing as legislators is making the environment. And things like if you restricted the use of certain houses, then what would happen is them houses can only be owner occupied. Hmm. They can't be bought by the investment market. So you're you're battling in the same level playing feed instead of yeah. the perverse way things are now. Again, Jersey's are building a big complex, and they've actually stipulated it cannot be sold to no one from outside the island and no. But he's going to be able to buy them all up. So things like that. You what always upset me as a member of Timble when it came to the banks, it came to the rich people, we could make our buttocks produce strawberries. The fact of the matter is, it's about time they started looking after the ordinary people. They are our, they are our celebration. It's ridiculous when we see first time buyers' houses, even in my constituency, lovely houses. But they, sh they should be houses for sad old bachelors like me, not for the likes of 
the likes of people who are bringing the next generation, they actually are the important ones in our society. They are the ones who are creating the future and putting them where they, we can't even give them a separate kitchen and a, and, and a living room in the one house. You know what it's like? I mean, you're a bachelor like me with kids. You need somewhere. I mean, you know, and, and, a, and, a, and a box garden. You know, they've got, we, and that's what I hope by this meeting. Right. Meeting, remind people. The meeting is on Thursday the, uh, the 13th of May at 7.30 at the Christian Science Church. So I do hope people come along. And I hope to see, I know the Green Party in particular, and maybe the Labour Party coming along to, to listen, because we've got to address this issue. It is wrong the way the media has conditioned people into lesser set standards. As I said before, today people go about how bad it is. They have no idea of the battles we had. The fact that we were we were creating promiscuity by trying to get free plan, family planning, people today would not believe. I mean, some of the things you couldn't repeat. What they, they would say they said in Disney Club, better known as Timbald. But the <laughs> fact is, we this is a serious social cancer, and there are simple ways of dealing with it. And I'd like to talk about the financing for our property owning democracy go on, as well. Go on, go on. Well, the situation is, you know, many people of your generation would not be in your house, only the fact that I kept on at the old Dr. Dr. Moore of the finance chairman at the time about when we had 15% interest rates and keeping them down so that people could stay as part of that property owning democracy. Now, what we've got to look at, we're having the absurdity of where we've got people who are are getting divorced, they're getting divorced in the late 30s, the late 30s, 40s, and then they've got a sizable equity, but they can't get a mortgage long enough to get back on the... Th we need to be addressing that issue. It pays us. And as I said before, when we went up to look at the house in Highview, High Crescent, Highfield Crescent, and Birchill, mm. back in the 70s, they were without that, that £3,000. That council house stayed... stayed in the tenancy with my mum and dad until about a year, about 18 months ago. That house would have been out into, into somebody else who needed that house. They would have had a part equity mortgage scheme where a fifth of the house would have been owned by the state. The restrictions that I'm talking about putting on about the commercial ability of the house so that it helps fight the social cancer that we have with housing. They would have, when my mum went into her home, she would have had to pay a full whack for the thousand pound a week that they were twelve hundred pound a week for it makes sense for government to be more progressive about stopping about looking after the fat cats and that's what i hope with liberal vanon wow. we will come about we are having another section with you and we're going to widen this out but uh, you've heard there about that event we're talking with peter Karen here from the liberal vanon party <laughs>